Good evening, football fans, and welcome to Barnhart Field in Rochester High School. Tonight we celebrate Senior Night, and in just a few moments we will begin with the introduction of the senior football players. Okay, we begin senior night with the senior football players alphabetically starting, and we begin with number 55, Brady Beck. His parents, Gary and Darla Beck. Favorite teacher, subject, and why? Favorite teacher is Terry Squeaton because he could always make you smile and really cared about all the students. He turned the worst days into the best for me. His favorite class was weights because I get a break from the classroom and get to have a little fun. Most memorable football or high school moment, getting to play football with the Shrivers, all of the Slangos, Marshall and Austin. Plans for after graduation are to join the workforce for heating and air conditioning or heavy equipment order. Operator. Call Bradley Heating and Cooling, 223 6819. Number 55, Brady Beck. He wears number 30, Alex Deming. Parents, Paul and Angie Deming. Favorite teacher, subject, and why? Mr. Atkinson, because he taught my favorite subject and he always had a fun class. Most memorable football or high school moment, Manchester camp, his sophomore year. Plans for after graduation to attend a four-year college for a business degree. Number 30, Alex Deming. Moving on to number seven, Colton Herbida. Parents, Teresa Lee and Michael Ferreira. Favorite teacher, subject, and why? Mrs. McGee, because she always has a smile on her face no matter the day. Favorite subject is work-based learning because it teaches me life-based skills. Most memorable football or high school moment, winning the share for the TRC his junior year. Plans for after graduation, go to college but undecided on a major. Number seven, Colton Ferbida. Next is number 11, Dylan Hook. Parents, Dustin and Grizzle Hook. Favorite teacher, subject, and why? Pre-calculus with Mr. Streeton. He made learning math fun and easy to understand. He was a great teacher and always friendly to talk to. Most memorable football or high school moment was during practice. I went up for a ball to intercept and Brent Beck took my legs out from under me and I landed head first and got a concussion right after we got our guardian taps to help prevent concussions. Plans for after graduation. He plans on going to college for engineering and or play football at the next level. Number 11, Dylan Puck. <laughs> Moving on to number 48, Wesley Meadows. Parents, Kirsten Schaefer, Derek Schaefer, and Corey Meadows. Favorite teacher, subject, and why? Mr. Streeton, he made his class interesting and made math fun. Most memorable football or high school moment, getting to play with my younger brother my senior year. Plans for after graduation to work at Core Mechanical as a welder 
or pipe fitter. Number 48, Wesley Meadows. Moving on to number 14, Parker Wallace, parents Michelle Bungie, Eric Bungie, Donald Wallace, and Michelle Maroney. Favorite teacher, subject, and why? Mr. Lowe's engineering, because he always makes us laugh and we always have fun in his class. Just two weeks ago, Colin Wynn brought a turtle in and Lowe told him not to put it in the trash can. Most memorable football or high school moment was when we were practicing PATs at practice and I doinked Wes Meadows right in the bum. Plans for after graduation to go to college for business and real estate and continue playing soccer and football at the next level. Number 14, Parker Wallace. Moving on to Colin Wien, I'll have to see what jersey he's got on tonight. It's usually number three or 52. Number three, parents are Eric Wien and Amy Parkman. His favorite teacher is Mr. Lowe because he always makes class fun. Most memorable high school moment was team camp. Plans. After graduation, go to the University of Northwestern Ohio for diesel mechanic and raise livestock. Number three, Colin Wien. <laughs> Moving on to number six, Gavin Young. Parents, Brandy Young, Evan, and Ashley Young. Favorite teacher is Mr. Pearson in welding class because of the projects. Most memorable high school football moment, wrestling with Josh Van Meter. Plans for after graduation, Lineman School. He wears number six, Gavin Young. Moving on to number 60, Peyton Young. Parents, Dad Matthew Young, stepmom Angel Lawson, mom Jessica Munster, stepdad Anthony Munster. Favorite teacher, subject and why? Favorite teacher is McCants. We talked about video games. Social studies is my favorite subject. I like learning about history. Most memorable football or high school moment it was a moment when Coach Schaefer would talk about food with the linemen. Plans after graduation, he plans on going to college for zoology to work with tigers, lions, and more. Number 60, Peyton Young. Wearing right, number 71, Roswell Zeiger. Parents, Rebecca and Jeremy Zeiger. Favorite teacher is Mrs. Carell because she is always cracking jokes and telling crazy stories. Most memorable football or high school moment is Coach Schaefer's hilarious analogies. Plans for after graduation, go to Purdue for engineering. He wears number 71, Roswell Zeiger. Congratulations to all our seniors and their parents.
sing of our national anthem. Thank you to the Rochester High School Marching Band. Zebra has won the cost, deferred their option. Northfield will be receiving. Zebras will be defending the East Bowl. As the national anthem is done, the coin toss has happened, and the Zebras won the coin toss, and they have deferred, and they'll take the ball in the second half. So they're going to put the defense on the field first, Val, and that's what you said the, uh, earlier about uh, getting that confidence back on defense. Yeah, I think they have to establish that. You know, one thing that Peru did is they double, and I saw some of this on the video, they double team Brady back pretty often. Yeah. They were not going to let Brady get in there and – disrupt things. Let's see what Northfield has in mind. If they want to, if they're going to double somebody, and if so, who they're going to double. Of course, the sun hasn't shined all day, and all of a sudden now the game's ready to kick off, and we get the sun coming out from the clouds, and the Zebras are going to look right into it as we kick off. They're going to go right to left on our radio dial. Left to right goes Northfield, and Greg Zimbleman, Val from RTC, and Randy, here we go. The kickoff of the Odell Lumber is taken at about the seven-yard line. That's going to be taken by Long. C.J. Long comes around the left side, and he's going to be brought down on that far side. Another thing we want to look at tonight is the defensive end play uh, last week against Peru. Uh, a lot of times when we got burned on the outside edges is because our, our defensive ends were getting pinned in, and some of that was, was going inside shade instead of going out. So the uh, Northfield Norse will start with the ball. Braden Bryce, the quarterback, as he comes up under center. And the first play goes for about a yard. And they're going to end up moving it forward about three. So it'll be second down and seven now. Second down and a three now for the Northfield Norris. Again, the quarterback, number seven, Bryden Rice. 
He goes to the sidelines to get the play. He'll bring it back to the huddle. And there you see what we mean by the midline. Again, he fakes giving the ball yeah. to Stevens either. So Stevens has to be factored into every play. So Twins to the near side. Now they do handoff again, and this one's going to go right up the middle. Maybe a yard. Short game on the play. That was Daniels. Daniels. Couldn't tell as they uh, kept Put everything in tight on that one, and Daniels picks up a, yard, a couple yards, so they'll give him third and five now on this short game for the uh, Norris. Kind of in the middle of the field right now. First, uh, first series of the game. Northfield Norris on offense first. Up under center is Rice. Rice sends a man in motion, then he'll reset. They go in motion again. Rice keeps it this time. Rice comes around the right side, and he's going to be tackled right at the line of scrimmage. So it's going to bring up fourth and five. Decision time now for Coach uh, Baker. Great nice play by Brady back to shed, and then he just lassoed Rice down. He's going to punt it away. So Dylan Hook will go deep, and the middle man is going to be Colton Fervita. Back to punt. Should be. Corbin Hopper. Rice threw only three passes last week against Wabash. Uh, you know, Northfield, their, their passing game has really kind of, it has been underrated over the years, but they have not been passing it as much this year. So here uh, will be the punt from Hoppert. Play clock running down to five. Here's the snap. Kind of an Australian style kick. It's going to go out of bounds. Zebra's going to end up with pretty good field position. As it's going to be as they mark it off on the Northfield side at the 49. So great field position for the Zebras as they start out on their first possession of the game as Northfield Norse go three and out. What's that do for the defense, Val? Boy, that's, that's a really good start. And, boy, it seems like they also do not want to punt the ball to Dylan Hook. I think we can, <laughs> we can conclude that. I mean, that's a very good start. Tigers jump out to a 6-0 lead over Southwood on senior night down there as well. Here's Pollock handed off to Beck. Beck runs it up the middle, now kicks it back outside. Beck through the tackles. Beck going all the way, the 10-5 touchdown. Beck. 49-yard touchdown run, and the Zebras jump on the board early. Grant has just taken his game to another level. He might have had the best game of his career against Peru last week, especially given the competition he was facing. He's got, he just gets better and better reading his blocks. Oh, that was a great lead block great by lead Deming. Block. That was a great lead block by Deming. So Brant Beck gets the Zebras on the board here on senior night on a 49-yard run, and the Zebras will look to go for the two-point conversion here. Fifth time in seven games this year that the Zebras have scored uh, on their opening possession. Yeah. And the sixth time in seven games that they have scored first. And when they do, it's usually pretty successful. So the Zebras will go for two. They split hook, clear out to the far side. Pollock up under center, sends Fervita in motion. He gets the pitch. Fervita around the right side, and he's in for the two-point conversion. But a flag coming from the official in the backfield. And it's going to be a holding against the Zebras, so I'm going to guess they'll do it again a little further out this time. Do you kick the PAT now? I, I think he kicked the PAT, kick the PAT. Parker is... I agree. I think you need to – that's one aspect of the game I think we need to be working on getting yeah. closer into the postseason. And that's what they're going to do. Parker coming out, make some changes as far as the field goal kicking team. Basically is what it's going to be, is be a field goal after the penalty. So uh, now they will go for the PAT. 6 nothing. Zebra's lead here with 9.30 to go in the opening quarter. First possession, first handoff, first everything there for the Zebras yeah. going. They, had, they did that against Wabash, too. Yeah. Uh, was it Deming for 51 yards Deming on the first long, play yeah. for scrimmage in that game? That was that was the first play of the game. It was. They have 74 Corbin Lane listed at 235 pounds. <laughs> I'll take the over. Okay. Yeah, I have <laughs> He's I, a big boy. Okay, that's interesting because I have Isaiah Beal. That's uh, wearing number 74. PAT attempt is up, but another penalty flag coming, and that's going to be against the Zebras. Nope. Going to be offside. It's against Northfield. Now. What does Coach Schaefer want to do? I think he's going to probably just stay with it and kick the PAT. 
They're looking at it and they'll march it off. And yep, Wallace is going to stay out there. So Parker Wallace will get uh, a little shorter PAT right, this was time. It, was it a dead ball foul? Yeah. I believe it was a dead ball yeah. foul. So. Yep. So another opportunity for PAT for Parker Wallace. The senior lines it up. Ball is up in the air, and it is good. good. And the Zebras take an early lead, 7 to nothing. 9.30 to go here in the contest. You're listening to Zebra Football, Giant FM Sports, and RTC TV4. <laughs> Hard field, the Rochester Ford scoring drive, home of the lifetime oil change. Well, Val, I'll give you a break on this one. I'll do it. One play, 49 yards. Brant back on the touchdown. The PAT by Wallace was good. And the Zebras lead with nine minutes and 30 seconds to go here. Seven to nothing. Yeah, 10 second drive. Yeah, whole 10 seconds. So now Wallace will get ready to kick it off again. This kickoff being brought to you by Odell Lumber and Supply. Here's Wallace's kick. It's going to be a deep one. It's trying to get it in the end zone, and it will just go outside the cone and be a penalty for going, kicking it out of bounds. Just didn't quite squibble into the end zone like he wanted. So now they'll get it at the 35-yard line, and that's where Northfield will have second possession here tonight. Greg, you're, uh, you know, one play there, but the Zebras score it. Tell us what you saw in that first opening drive. Well, I think on both sides of the ball, it looks to me like uh, Rochester's definitely going to handle the line of scrimmage on both sides for the entire evening. Uh, there's quite a big difference in the size advantage and uh, the athleticism between the two. So the Zebras will get ready to play defense again. Here is Rice back up under center. He's got twins to the near side. Sends a man in motion. Rice will look to throw. Rice throws it up over the top, and it's going to be incomplete. The intended receiver was number 29, Cody Stamball. I don't think uh, Rice really even gave an extra look to see where uh, Stamball was. He just knew he was going to have to get rid of it quickly, and he did. And sometimes that's dangerous as the Zebras kind of see that. They might be uh, watching his eyes and pick that one off next time. Well, I think Coach... Baker knows as well as any that he, he only passed the ball three times yeah. last week. And so if Rochester's are going to pack the box, they're going to have to loosen things up. And they like to pass the ball to the tight end. And the handoff is on the near side, and a flag comes flying in from the back or from the uh, umpire. And that handoff was to a 35 Stevens. But we'll see what the flag is first. It's going to be a dead ball. No. Nope. Going to be a block below the knees against Northfield. He waved off the dead ball foul. So the flag is thrown at the 35, the original line of scrimmage, so they'll mark it back. It's a 10-yard penalty. And that takes the run out of the kickoff yeah. out of bounds. Yes. Yeah. So they'll take it back to the personal foul, 15-yarder. So they'll take it back all the way to the uh, 20. So that's where the Northfield Norse will have it now, second and 25. So Rice will come up set under center. Everybody's uh, in tight. Out of the option. He hands it off in the near side. That's number two. That's Daniels. Daniels comes to the near side. He'll pick up a couple. Wesley Meadows on the tackle, nice tackle by Wesley because they actually I thought the offensive line opened up a fairly nice hole yeah. for uh, Daniels. But So Wesley. far in the game what you're seeing is uh, Northfield's really wanting to run to their strong side, their tight end side, and I think that uh, Rochester's playing that very, very well right now. Right, and they're putting Alex Deming on the strong side and uh, Peyton Young on the weak side. Rice looks to throw, throws it up over the top, and the intended receiver was number 23. And that was Keaton Wallace, and uh, that was over the top of his head. Now it's going to bring up fourth and long for the Norse, and obviously they will punt it away. Zebras should end up with pretty good field position again here as uh, the punt will come from inside the 20 of the Norse. The wing tee is just a very difficult offense yeah. to throw out of. <laughs> Uh, you're going to have to try to get a tight end out in the flats. You're throwing, going to try to get a wing back. All that can get cluttered when you're you're confined <laughs> in. You're really packed in there unless you go to a wide receiver. Yeah. So back to punt again will be Corbin Hoppert. Hook and Fervita. They just do a little squib kick, and Zebras say get away from it. 
And uh, Daniels. <laughs> Easier said than done. Yes, especially the way that yeah. thing went. That ball was hunting. Maddox the Rochester Jewel spot. almost uh, got the back of his leg. Almost had to play jump rope on that one. Zebra start on their own 45 this time as they'll have it first in 10 after the punt by Hoppert. 32-yard punt and no return. Randy, Val, and Greg here on Giant FM Sports and RTC4. Glad you could join us here on this Friday night. Week number seven. Ball's on the far hash for the Zebras. Pollock will bring them set out of the huddle. Ferva to Beck and Deming in the backfield. Ferva to gets this call around the right side. Ferv going to pick up almost five. It's a long four. Second and six now for the Zebras. Randy Wynn, glad you could be here. All of a sudden, the Tigers are opening things up already in Southwood. It is 20 to nothing. They are a good football team. I, I, I salute them. They played very, very well last week. Pass by Pollock. He's got a man wide open, and it's complete to Meadows. Meadows inside the 10, 5, oh. touchdown. Oh, oh, oh. Meadows breaks a tackle. The Ta trying to tackle him was number 25, C.J. Long. And the Meadows just ran over him and kept going. And a big touchdown pass there for Pollock. Oh, just the, they caught the outside linebacker playing run. And that's probably from the Brand Beck touchdown run. And for Wesley, that ball probably seemed like it hung up in the air for about an hour. <laughs> he was open, but he was able to keep his eye on it and run it down. And that's a 51-yard touchdown reception. Meadows with the reception. And we will go for two. Pollock up under center. Pollock gives it to Beck, and he just walks in the end zone of the two-point conversion. Good. So now the Zebras lead it 15 to nothing here with 7.34 to go here in the contest. Giant FM Sports and RTC TV4. Uh, Carson Pollock. Two-point conversion run by Brandt Beck, and Rochester leads 15 to nothing with 7.34 to go in the first quarter. Rochester has had 56 seconds of time of possession in this game, <laughs> and they've got 15 points. That's, so, that's pretty efficient. That is very efficient. Parker Wallace getting ready to do the Odell Lumber kickoff after the touchdown. Back deep will be uh, 29 Stamball. And offsides. Yep, Zebras are going to be offsides. It's never a good thing. You just got to wait on the kicker. So a penalty against the Zebras. They'll have to re-kick. So they'll move it back five yards. So Wallace will re-kick it. Again, early in the contest, still 7.34 remaining. The Zebras own a 15 to nothing lead. We'll keep an eye on some other area scores from around the area. Winnemac and West Central 0-0 after the first quarter. That's tonight in Francisville. That is. Another big one, Culver and Caston. Somebody's going to get their first win of the season. Here is the kickoff. It's going to be taken inside the 10 by Northfield Stamball. Stamball will bring it up the Zebra sideline, and he'll be rushed out of bounds, and that's where they'll start at about the, like about the 35. I think that was long again. Was that long CJ again? CJ Long and Gavin Young knocked him out of bounds. So they're going to mark the ball at the 32-yard line. And that's where they'll start it. First and 10 for Northfield. Again, Rice, the quarterback, will bring him out of the huddle. And obviously a huge game tonight with Tippecanoe Valley at West Lafayette. Yeah, uh, that'll be a bit interesting. Valley one. ranked number seven in Class 3A, and West Lafayette's ranked number two. Rice. The handoff right back up the middle, and or did he fake that and Rice keep it himself? Because I saw him dive back in there. Either way, they gain. A, I thought Rice kept it. I th he did, I think, pulled it out on that option. Thought he had it. No, guard, no gain. Second and ten. 
That's going to be tough to do to run that up the middle. And you got when you're staring at X and Beck right there, uh, and, you know. And then you go further out. You got Deming and and those guys there. It's going to be tough for Northfield, uh, size-wise, let alone anything else coming up the middle. Rice sends a man in motion, looking to throw. He does, and it's going to be tipped at the line. It's going to be out complete to Daniels. Daniels around the left side. I don't think he catches that if it wasn't tipped at the line because that thing kind of took an awkward spin, kind of slowed it down a little bit, and Daniels was able to ride, uh, run underneath it and catch it. Uh, I think Hook was there on the tackle. I think Gavin Young was there to help out a little bit, but they did not get the first down. No, nope. the there is something in the Zebra scouting report because now I've seen it three times, but <laughs> Gavin Young and, and Alex Deming are switching sides. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Peyton Young is switching sides as well. Switched it again. Here comes the blitz for the Zebras, and they might have got in there too soon. I'm not sure. And the dead ball foul, and it is against Northfield as they saw the blitz coming too yeah. and caused their line to jump. But It's interesting because uh, Coach Schaefer and Coach um, Basham and Coach Davis don't blitz a ton. Looks like they were coming on that one. Yeah, and they were uh, coming on the yeah. Not sure. Looks like they might have, I'm not sure who they were sending there. Might have been Wesley Meadows a little bit coming up that middle. So it's third and long now for Northfield. They'll reset things. Rice is back up under center. Rice, he's going to keep it, and he's going to be tackled in the backfield for a loss. And it's going to be fourth at about 12 now, and Northfield will have to punt it away again. Zebra's just dominating up front yeah, on the line. Young and Deming were there. And the thing is that the defensive ends are containing so well, yeah. they can get out on the perimeter. Yeah. And that was, of course, that was a problem last week, but that was, uh, Rutger was such a great athlete. Hopper back to punt again for Northfield. Again, Dylan Hook and Fervita back for the Zebras. Now Hook will get an opportunity as he takes it at the 35. Hook. Goes around the right side, and he's going to bring it back to about the 42-yard line. Seven-yard return for Dylan Hook, and the Zebras will have their third possession from there. 35-yard uh, punt by Hopper and an eight-yard return by Hook. It's interesting the way uh, they put – where they put Ferv out there kind of as almost like an up man, but kind yeah. of like a, as well, like, a, like a lead blocker. Well, that too. Well, or if you're going to yeah. punt it short, uh, you want to kick it short away right. from Dylan, then right. Ferv can uh, pick it up there. The Zebras are back at the, on the line. Great field position, though. They'll take this every time. They hand off to Beck again. Beck comes to the near side. Beck across the 45, down near the 50 as he... Lunges forward on a second effort. He's going to get into Northfield territory at their 49-yard line. Well, that was no secret what they were going to do there. Did you see they shifted Alex over behind? Yeah. Right behind uh, probably more of the guard tackle spot. And we're just going to run left. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, when you can uh, have Alex as the, the lead blocker, yeah, he's going to clear a hole along in the, with the line. So. Well, we haven't ran belly or trap yet. That's coming. Val's, Val loves the belly. <laughs> There's Deming up the middle. Deming breaks through. Deming on the That's right trap. side. That's Deming trap. is going to go. 10, 5, touchdown, Alex Deming. 49 yard Here's run. Here's the trap. Greg called it. Deming with a 49 yard run. And a big run for Alex. He broke through a couple tackles there. That's what happens when you try to tackle high. Uh, you're you're not going to bring Deming down with a well, tackle I'll high. Tell you, you always like to see your teammates blocking downfield yeah. 15 yards downfield from the ball. Two-point conversion coming. And Pollock will roll out till he's right. He'll just going to tuck it and keep it, and yes. he is short, they say. Short. The side judge over there waved it off, so the two-point conversion no good. And the Zebras take a... 21 to nothing lead here with 454. That was supposed to be a pass to Brandon yeah. Bag. Northfield covered it. They did cover they it. They were there. 21 right. nothing. 454 to go here from Rochester High School on Barnhart Field, China FM and RTC TV4. For the Rochester Ford home of the lifetime oil change. 
two plays, 57 yards. It took 46 seconds off the clock. Alex Deming with a 49-yard touchdown run. Two-point conversion run failed. Rochester leads 21 to nothing with 4.54 to go into the first quarter. Rochester scored three touchdowns on five offensive snaps. Kickoff is to Northfield. That time is going to be taken a little shorter, and that looked like uh, number six. Was that number six? Adderman? Yep, Adderman. Adderman had that one on the short kick. So the uh, Norris will take over as they bring it back to about the 33-yard line. Greg, obviously Rochester taking advantage of, of their size and, and capability of blocking downfield that they do and, and really making that happen, and even on defense, just causing havoc. We'll talk more about that as Rice tries to keep it up the middle. He's going to go nowhere. If you're Northfield, what are you trying to do here? Obviously, as you're looking on the other side of things and you're, you're seeing uh, X and Deming and Young and all these guys. Well, I think if you're Northfield, you've just got to run what works best for you. Uh, you know, I, I think it's no secret coming into this game they were going to be outsized uh, probably on, on both the offense and defensive side. So, you know, this is a game where you work on, on basically your strengths. Right, I mean, they, they've tried to pass the ball. Yeah. I mean, they've thrown, what, three passes already? Yeah. They only threw three times all last week against Wabash. They probably saw the zebra struggle in the past defense, but just haven't been able to get anything going. I think run around the left side, that's Stamball. Stamball will run a long way, but he's only going to pick up a yard as he was the man in motion, but the zebras did a good job of stringing that out. And a one-yard gain for Stamball. It's third and nine now. I meant to say Peyton Young and Alex Deming are switching sides of the yeah. ball instead of Gavin. <laughs> I still am trying to figure out what they're what they're keying on in the backfield uh, to make the to switches. Make, to yeah. make the switch, maybe just to right, mess with them. I, you never know. Yeah. There goes Young yeah. again, moving over to the right either, side. Yeah. But Twins to the near side this time. Looking to throw, nope, they're gonna try to run it, try to spread the zebras out, and that's gonna go nowhere. And it's gonna be fourth and long, and Northfield gonna have to punt it away again. It's In order for twins to work, yeah. you've gotta be willing to want to throw. Yeah, yeah, that was a definite run all the way. And that was Stevens, I believe they've had it. They'll punt it away, and Dylan Hook will drop back deep, so will Fervita. Well, Val, I'll turn the tables on you if you're a coach. And you're up 21 to nothing. What are you going to work on if you're Rochester? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. I, I'm really, I was so interested in defense. I, there's the punt taken by Hook. Hook at the 35. We'll get it back across like, the 45. Like, like defense was just number one, two, three, four, and five in my mind. I understand. Game, I, I said uh, I look at it from a standpoint like yeah. this. Uh, we can run the ball all game, it, it seems like. Yeah. I go, I said in games like this, you want to work on what you're not good at right. or what you want to get better at for the postseason. And I believe in that, throwing the ball. Yeah. I, I'm, a big, I'm a big fan of uh, Carson, and I think yeah. he throws a great ball. We, get, we need to get more reps. Especially on first down. 49-yard line where they start. Well, speaking of that, here's Park Carson flushed out of the pocket. He throws as he's hit. And incomplete, but uh, great throw as he's going down. And Wien was the intended receiver. Uh, giving uh, pursuit there was number 74 is Isaiah Bell. I absolutely love the play call yeah. on first down. The only thing I don't like about that play is whenever Carson is taking the snap, he is always turning his back to the blind side and throwing across his body <laughs> as yeah. a right-handed thrower. As a young quarterback, I'd like to see him roll out to his throwing side it's a little easier to, to see the field, and then if it's not there, you can just take off and run. Pollock back up in her center, second and 10 now from the Zebra 49. They hand it off to Deming. Deming gets to the 45, but another flag from the White Hat. And we'll see what that call is going to be. Generally holding. Hold. Yep. And so holding on the Zebra, so that's coming back. And the Zebras will have to uh, do it again. You know what I tell my boys when they get called for a hold? Yeah you hold twice as hard the very next play because you never get a back-to-back -back holding call. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah. So they'll march it off, and the Zebras will get it back at the 439-yard line. Yep. So it'll be second and 20. 
for the Zebras. See what the Zebras opt to do here as Pollock near on the sideline gets the call from Coach Schaefer. He'll run it back in. 15 on the play clock for the Zebras. Break the huddle at 12. Second and 20. Zebras lead 21-0 here with still 2.10 to go in the first quarter. The handoff. Second man through is Beck. Beck cuts it back up. Beck crosses the 50. 45. Going to be finally brought down at about the 43, 44 yard line. I'll tell line. you, that was all set up with a great, great ball fake by yeah. Alex Deming. Yeah. There for, for two or three yards, I thought he had the ball. <laughs> yeah. yeah he, Thank goodness it was running right at me, or I yeah. would have probably said the same thing. But back with a nice cut back there as well. And uh, then he just drags a, a Northfield Norris until he can get some help. But Zebras get 15 of that back. And so now it's just a third and five, much more manageable. I throw it. Pollock up under center. Pollock fakes it again. Fervita gets it around the right side this time. Fervita's got the first down and more still down the sideline and finally going to be tackled uh, near the 22-yard line or 23-yard line, something like that. So yeah, a first down for the Zebras. Right side of the offensive line just caved in the left side of the Northfield defense. Steve Moore insurance first down here again tonight. Zebras don't have many, but yeah. when you score on – Peyton Young engaged his guy and then just yeah. kept engaging him. He oh, drove him for three or four yeah, yards down the field. That was some nice blocking by Peyton Young. 60 seconds remaining here in the opening quarter. Pollock will send Dylan Hook to this near side. He split out wide. Ball's on the far hash. Up under center. Pollock looking to throw again. Rolls to the near side. Now he'll just tuck it, and he'll go back up the middle. And again, he rolls out to his left. But a nice decision on Carson's uh, part, and he tucks it, picks up seven yards. It's going to be second down and three now with 30 seconds to go. Well, looking like Northfield's made a quick adjustment on that, the roll, the boot left, and trying to get the tight end involved. It looked like they, because the tight end is, they've not struggled to get the tight end involved. Will they get the play off, or will they just wait? Zebra's going to have to hurry. Play clock's down I'll tell you to what I've 10. Is the bootleg. Yeah. Any bootleg, but could bring in the backside tight end. And so hook about two hook, seconds hook. difference. They do. Yeah, hook in the game up wide receiver. Rolls to his right, looking to throw, oh. and it's going to be a sack in the backfield as some miscommunications there. And that's how the quarter will end. 21 0 on the Insulation Guys scoreboard as we head to the second quarter after this. You're listening to Zebra Football, Giant FM, and RTC TV Fords. Bart Hartfield, we get ready to start the second quarter. Zebra's leading 21 0. Again, on the Insulation scoreboard. And uh, my wife's giving me an update from Peru at the end of one there. It's 27 0. And Commissioner Neidig down at Peru tonight uh, stopped in and watching the. Uh, Peru Tigers and Southwood Knights. I also have breaking news. Caston is up 15 to 0 Ooh. with nine minutes left in the second half or second quarter. Hand off to Beck to start the second quarter around the left side. Cuts it back up and he crosses into the red zone, being brought to you by Farm Credit Mid America, securing the future of rural communities and agriculture. Yeah. Farm Credit Mid America Red Zone. He was at the 19 now of the North. Gain of six on that play, and then they'll set up a, four, a fourth and six. Culver uh, coming into that game a little banged up. Uh, Coach uh, Faust told me last Saturday that they, the, by the end of the game, they had six starters out uh, at the end of that game with Winnemac. So Pollock brings them up under center. They're anticipating Belly, but I wouldn't. And they're up the middle for uh, Alex Deming, and he's going to be near the first down, but about a yard short. You mark could just tell with their defense, they scrunched it in tight. Yeah, That's what they were anticipating. So a turnover on downs for the Zebras. So just a hair short, so now Northfield will take it at the 14-yard line. So first and 10 from Northfield. Deep in their own territory. 21-0 here in the second quarter. Zebras lead it on the insulation guys scoreboard. Winnemac and West Central are tied 8-8 with five minutes to go in the first half. That's a big battle there in Pulaski County. Tippecanoe Valley 14-0 over West Lafayette end of one quarter. Wow. Up under center is Rice for Northfield. 
Hands it over to the right side. Going nowhere. I don't think they've ran one counter yet, have they? No, I don't think so. They're going to have to start running a counter or anything because they're getting they're getting no push off of their offensive line. Two-yard loss, so it's going to be second down and 12 now for the Norris. Yeah, if you want to keep the fullback from getting going, just push the entire offensive line back yeah. three yards. And we do have a different quarterback on the field for Northfield. Number 18, Jack Perney, sophomore, 6'2", sophomore on the field. So Perney in there for quarterback for Northfield. He's got twins to the near side, single set to the top. Perney rolls, slips, oh, and slip. he's going to be brought down at the 10-yard line. He was trying to throw, and as he sets that foot, he just slips on the, the uh, dewy grass and goes down. So and another the other, loss. And the other Perney, Joey Perney, came up kind of limping a little bit. I think he's okay. So it'll be third and about 15 now for the Norse. Clock rolls with 9.57 to go here in the second quarter. Coming to the near side will be at number 14, Denton. They do bring another one and single, single set to the top. Now looking to throw, Perney on the screen oh, and had it, but I think there was a miscommunication between uh, Denton and number 25, C.J. Long, as I think – Long thought it was going to be for him, but Denton had a hand on it, and unfortunately a turnover now as uh, they're going to have to punt it away. Going to give Zebras a really good field position because uh, Dylan Hook is standing at the Northfield Norris 40. This punt coming from the, uh, from the end zone. You don't think it would be like Oregon and fake punt? Uh, you never know anymore. <laughs> Here it is. Almost ex almost got in there. Might have got a piece of it. I'm not sure, but that ball is going to take a zebra bounce. And it will uh, come stopped at the 32-yard 32, 32 line. Looks like where they're going to set it. So the zebras will take over first and 10. 23-yard punt. Really no, uh, not a whole lot of change in field position there. First and 10 now for Pollock. Pollock will bring him up set to the line. Demick shifts, shifts to the right. Fervita comes in motion. Fervita gets the handoff. Fervita kind of stretch it out and here comes a penalty flag from the judge in the back. And Ferv. Might get back to the line of scrimmage, but uh, the penalty flag, I'm going to guess, against the Zebras, and it is a hold. Those are the things that, uh, in a game like this, it will drive Coach Schaefer crazy because, you know, you go last week pretty much penalty-free against a very, very good uh, Peru team, and then tonight you come in here uh, with maybe a, a struggling Northfield team, and you've already had a couple uh, uh, unnecessary penalties. Can I, can I mention, I, I talked to some people last week about that penalty, that weird penalty with Ferv. Uh-huh. Aiding, it was called aiding a runner. Okay. And that is illegal, but it, how they enforce it is even kind of debated <laughs> within officials. Okay. Um, but you cannot, like, when you see the Philadelphia Eagles do a quarterback sneak every week, yeah. th that is illegal in high school football. Gotcha. So we're going to get a timeout by Coach Schaefer. He doesn't like something that he Tigers seen. lead over Southwood 34 to nothing. And, of course, how, sometimes how does just the pile, sometimes the pile just moves. Right. I mean, some you know, Brand Beck, he just keeps his legs turning. Sometimes he doesn't need the help. First and 20 for the Zebras. Pollock looks to throw. He's rolling to the near side, throws it over the top again. Complete. Oh. Tended receiver was Beck and kind of, kind of a high throw for Beck. And it'll be second and 20 now for... Rochester. Hey, I really like the play calling. Uh, you know, that's the one thing that I think if you're going to go deep into the postseason, you've got to have Carson. you got to get him comfortable. Mm -hmm. And he throws oh, yeah. a really, really good ball. And the only way that's going to happen is through more reps. Yep. Totally agree. You can do it in practice, but it's not quite the same. So, Dylan Hook in a wide receiver. 
Ferv goes in motion. The double handoff goes back to Beck. Beck around the left side. Beck cuts it back up the middle. Beck, 20, and finally going to be shoestring catched at the 19-yard line. It'll put him inside the red zone and another Steve Moore insurance first down. Touchdown saving tackle by Joey Perney. Yeah, it sure was. That was a great hustle by him. But a gain of 24 yards, or 23 yards, excuse me. So first and 10 for the Zebras from the Northfield North 19-yard line. Again, leading 21-0, eight and a half minutes to go here before halftime. Halftime, senior activities uh, for the band, for cheerleaders, and I'm not sure, dance team. I'm not sure what else they've got. Pollock looking to throw again. Throws it high into the end zone, incomplete to a diving Dylan Hook. Incomplete. Hook went all out for that one. Carson might have let him just a little bit too much on that. But, again, love the play call, and uh, you, you just get better at it. You learn from that one, and you dial it down a hair next time. Well, he, he really only had one option there. I said that was, uh, that was fully intended for him. There was nobody else. Mm -hmm. Uh, other than I can't remember if the tight end, he didn't go out very far. He went out at the line of scrimmage. Right. Safety was too far upfield. That, I mean, it just needed to put a little more air under that ball, but it was a yeah, right idea. Pollock up in their center again. Hook Are they to loading the, top. the left? Going they did the load left. left as Beck comes around that left side. Beck cuts it back down the sideline. Got another first down and a touchdown from the 19-yard line. Brent back with another touchdown on the evening. That's a great run. I mean that's a great run and a, and uh my only issue is you get into LCC that's not going to work. <laughs> Fur with a nice block. Um Peyton Young and Brady Beck they were down near like the 2 yard line blocking. I mean they went Yeah, but you're yeah. So the PAT coming for Parker Wallace. Pollock the holder. Snap, kick is up, and it is good. Boy, he's got a heck of a leg. He does, doesn't he? 28 0 on the insulation guys scoreboard. Zebra's lead it back with more Giant FM and RTC TV4. Back here at Barnhart Field, that Rochester Ford scoring drive, Val. Five plays, 32 yards, took one minute, 25 seconds off the clock. Brand Beck with a 19-yard touchdown run. Parker Wallace with a PAT, and Rochester leads Northfield 28 to nothing with 8.09 to go in the half. Wallace getting ready to kick off. C.J. Long, the deep man for the Norse. Wallace, an end-over-end kick coming to the near side, going to be taken by two and Daniels. Daniels runs up the zebra sideline, and he's going to be knocked out of bounds at about the 31, 32 yard line. And that's where the Norris will take over first and 10 with 8.04 to go here in the first half. So the Norris will come out and see if they can make some adjustments and get the ball moving. They really have not been past their own 40 yard line. They have not had a first down yet in this game. No. So they're starting at the 31 this time. McConaughey leads Lewis Cass, 7 to 6, end of the first quarter. That should be a, a nice ball game down there. So back with their quarterback, number 18. He goes to throw it. It's up in the air for a jump ball. And Maddox Jewell almost had that as he came down. Again, Perney, the quarterback right now. Caston now leads 28 to zero mm. with 549 left in the half. Homecoming down there as well. Yes, it is. Yes. Comet's looking to uh, get the first one of the season on the homecoming. Got a good start. So Perning back up under center. Perning. He rolls to the right. Tucks it up underneath, and he is going to get maybe a yard. It's going to be third and nine Perny now. I'm guessing Perny is uh, more of their throwing quarterback uh, than Rice. Obviously, uh, he's a lot taller and can see over the defense maybe a little better. Perny will wait for the play to come in. And it does from number 23, Keaton Wallace. Northfield. Played Bluffton first game of the season. Bluffton's mm -hmm. ranked number one in 2A. I mean, that's a tough start to the yeah. season. Their schedule always 
starts tough and then lightens up a little bit. The, and they're always playing their best football by act, by late October. And I, I, mean, I imagine it'll, it'll be no different this year. You know, the problem is in the pitch. same section with Adam Central. Pitch goes to Daniels, and Daniels is met in the backfield. He goes nowhere. In fact, he loses about six yards. Yeah, that's, that's a very good sign because the Zebras have had trouble stopping the perimeter run. Yeah. And Daniels, from from Northfield's standpoint, Daniels had to have a big game for them to compete in this game. And, and now they'll have to punt it away again. Yeah. And back to punt will be Corbin Hoppert. Again, uh, Ferv the short man, uh, Hook the deep man here for this punt. Hoppert. Gets it off just before Vance can get there. Hook will take it at his own 40. Hook across the midfield. Hook into Northfield territory at the 40, and he's finally going to be brought out of bounds. At the, uh, they're going to mark him at the 34-yard line, and the Zebras will take over first and 10 from the Northfield 34. Randy, Greg, and Val, glad you could join us tonight for high school football. Zebras up 28 to nothing as... Taking on the North next week. We're on the road to Southwood. And then we're back home for week number nine in the McConaughey Braves as we round out the regular season. I had it, what, a 33-yard punt and a 26-yard return by Hook. That's only a seven-yard net. Hook goes to the far side. And a handoff this time to Deming. Deming coming to the near side. He lunges forward, and he's going to be brought down at the 27-yard line. So a big six-yard pickup for Alec Deming. Second and four. Tigers lead 41-0 in the second quarter. So Southwood will be hungry for a win next week as the Zebras travel down there. It's been a while since Rochester won at Southwood. Hooks to the far side. Pat goes in motion. They fake it to him. Pollock keeps it. Pollock. Tucks it and gets it down right at the 20. That's another Steve Moore insurance first down and a Farm Credit Mid-America red zone for the Zebras. That looked like an old, uh, like a, like an Oklahoma or Nebraska option play. Valley up 21 to six over West Lafayette. Wow, that's interesting. Valley's on a roll. What'd you say West Lafayette was ranked? Number two. They lost to Harrison in their season opener. They won five in a row since. Pollock again up under center. Beck goes in motion. Beck gets it. Beck then is tripped up just barely. And here comes a penalty flag from the backfield. And I'm guessing that's going to be against the Zebras. He threw that as if it was a personal foul. But yeah. Could be wrong, but he didn't look very happy when he threw that. Kind of what I was thinking. You and I both uh, saw at the same time, and I just thought in my head, that's not good. And the Zebras are marching back quite a ways, and it is dead ball personal foul against the Zebras. Personal foul against the Zebras. Well, did and he just give the ejection signal? Well, I'm not. Either that or he kind of pointed to that other oh. official. I saw his thumb come out. Yeah, I think he just kind of, I don't know if Coach Schaefer was asking who. And, he kind of said, I don't know, ask that guy. <laughs> so luckily it is a spot foul, so it only goes back to the 29-yard uh, line. But still the Zebra's second and 20 now. He's looking to the right. I wonder if he's going to pass. Pollock rolling this way. He's looking. Here comes pressure. He steps up, and he will get sacked in the backfield. Pollock goes down. Pressure coming from that right side of the Norris line, and that came out of 56, Jackson Martin. So before Cars went underneath center, he checked the right side, mm -hmm. and that's what made me wonder if he wasn't going to pass that time versus just hand it off. Jewel will come in for, who's he going to come in for? Oh, Meadows. So now you have Jewel and Hook both out there. So it's third and 22, but you're at the 32-yard line of Northfield. I, I think you just try to pick up some yards and yeah, give think, it to Parker I, Wallace I think for thinking, the kick. Yeah, or uh, or what you're thinking for. I that. mean, that's one of those things we talked about. Yeah, you you, you don't get to do four wide receivers in there. Did we Pollock just do shotgun over the top and it's caught by Fervin a touchdown with four wide receivers in the game. What zebras with a huge touchdown 
as we look back, if you're watching RTC, we yeah. spread them out. Spread them out. Pollock out of the shotgun. What a great throw. You may have just found something for caution. Pollock gives him a little more time out of that shotgun. And Colton Further catches it in stride and goes into the end zone with 4.05 to go here in the second. The PAT is going to be whistled off as the flag comes. And so we'll see what happens. Is That's the first shotgun snap all year, isn't it, Val? Yeah. Yeah. And it's the first, that formation. Yes. Same, yeah. Everything about everything about that formation was unique. Zebras will decline the penalty. It's offsides, and so they'll just kick it again for Parker Wallace. Yeah, it was a dead it was a dead ball fall. Yeah. So they can't they can't accept the kick, even though it went through the uprights. So Wallace will attempt the PAT again. Snap, Pollock with the hold, the kick by Wallace, and it is good. No, oh, no good. Oh, I thought that went through. Boy, it must have just missed. Had plenty of legs, so it had to be wide on one side. And the Zebras have a 34 to nothing lead now here with 4.05 to go here in this opening half. Conference running coming up tomorrow. We'll talk about that for the cross country. Uh, we already talked about golf a little bit. We'll hit back on that as well coming up in the winning edge halftime, and we'll also talk about the other sports as tennis has uh, one little one going. Parker Wallace with a squib kick, tried to outrun it and unfortunately did not get it, but uh, there for Northfield was number 35, that's Turner Stevens. So uh, Northfield now with their best field position of the night at the 46 yard line. Randy and Val and Greg here with you tonight here on Giant FM and RTC TV4. Glad you could join us. Don't forget Coach's Corner coming your way tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. We'll talk to five area coaches about tonight's game and preview week number eight already. Up under center. Looking to throw, and it is a rocket. The pass by Perney was intended for Denton, and, boy, he just – reared back and threw that like he was throwing a baseball. Yeah, and if you're <laughs> Coach Schaefer right now, I think the one thing that you got to take a look at is you can start substituting in some of those underclassmen, uh, mainly on the interior. Yeah, you I, know, some tackles, some defensive ends, some linebackers. I, I think you still keep your starting secondary out there. Obviously, four minutes to go as the clock stops on an incomplete pass. So, second and ten now for the Norris. Looking to throw. Penry over the top of Denton this time. Perny, obviously the throwing quarterback because they've already thrown more. Well, and I don't understand. If yeah. you're going to throw, why aren't and he's getting pressure, why not go back into gun automatically? Right. Give yourself a little bit of time. Lafayette Central Catholic leads Twin Lakes 29 to nothing with five minutes to go in the half. Ooh. That's it's not a bad Twin Lakes team. Coach O'Shea going up against his former team and mm. being treated rudely. <laughs> Triton leads North Judson 6 to nothing into the first quarter. That's a big one in the Hoosier North tonight. Perney, the handoff goes right back up the middle, and they'll pick up a couple, but it's going to be fourth and long, and they'll have to punt it away. One of the big ones in the Hoosier North tonight. The other one is Knox and Pioneer. Stevens was the carrier. He picked up. Couple there. Do you have a score on that one yet? I'm still looking for that one, and I'm, I'm kind of curious to see who's healthy and who's not healthy for Northfield, because Rands and um, I mean Knox or Knox, uh, not Knox, yeah, yeah. Knox Pioneer, yeah, uh, because Pioneer uh, Rands and uh, uh, Toloza for Pioneer missed last week, mm -hmm. and Coach Barry said they were kind of going to be. Uh, didn't think Rands was going to play. Game time decision on Toloza. Hopper with a nice kick. It's going to be caught by a Hook back at the 20 yard line. Hook. Brings it right back up the middle, and here comes a flag all the way from the side judge in the I thought they backfield. Almost would have could have called a blindside block, yeah. but I'm not sure that was the call that they're going to make. Let's see what he did, because yeah, he threw that flag with authority. Personal foul. Did, he went like, is that is that head to head? I mean, is that a uh, I believe so, yeah. So they're going to mark it off. Again, Zebras with a lot of penalties here tonight in in this contest as they lead 34 to nothing. I'm thinking that probably one of the things that Coach Schaefer is going to be more concerned about than 
than uh, anything because you don't want to give up some of these penalties as you get deeper into the into the tournament run. Let's go gun again. Yeah. Let's go spread. Ball sitting all the way back at the. And if we have to punt, that's another thing that we can work right. on is the punt. Yeah. All the way back at the, was that the 16, 17-yard line? First and 10 for the Zebras. Back up under center, Pollock. Looking to hand it off. No, nope, going to roll it. Rolls to his right, throws it, complete by Deming. Deming breaks one tackle, and he's going to get back up near the 25, 26-yard line. It's going to be second down and about four now for the Zebras. Clock continues to roll under three to go here before halftime. I believe that is Alex's second career reception. <laughs> uh, he had one at the very, very end of the LCC game to last close out the season yeah. last year. So second and about four now for the Zebras. Hook goes to the far side. Ball's on the near hash. Pollock sends back in motion, fakes it to him, and they go back to Deming in the middle, and he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage. And it's going to be third and four now for the Zebras. I've been saying this for years, is I think you could get an automatic timeout come sectional time if you lined Alex up as a wing just one time. <laughs> Knox leads. 22 to nothing with three minutes left in the first. Halftime at Peru, it's 47 to nothing. Uh, Tigers over the Knights. Here's the Zebras. It's Fervida. Battling. Gets a, a Steve Moore insurance first down. That will stop the clock to move the chains, and Zebras will have it first and 10. Nice shot by Fervy. Made the first man miss. Clock rolls now with a minute 50 to go before halftime. Ball's at the 43-yard line. Good time to work on a hurry up. Yeah. Goes to Fervita, back to Beck. Beck up the middle. He's wide open. Beck at the 50. Beck, 40, 30, 20, oh, wow. 10. And he's going to be caught from behind inside the 10 at about the 8, 9-yard line. Not and very often Beck gets caught from behind. No. No, pretty quick. Great Aaron. hustle by Blake Adderman. Kudos to him, but... Again, the, the first safety took a bad angle, and Beck gets going to mark it down there about the 8-9 yard line. A gain of 59 yards on that play for Brant Beck. It is at the 9 clock. Is it a minute 19? Pollock up under center. Pollock. Power lead. To uh, Fervida. Yeah, he throws that back Fervita and then just takes there. the lead, and Inside the five, down around the three. Zebras are in that hurry up. Nice little hurry up defense or offense here to ch check it out. Don't necessarily need it, but they're <laughs> trying to get it in. Hook to the far side. They pitch it to Fervita again. Fervita just rolls over the defender and in for a touchdown on a four yard run. Colton Fervita with a big run. And, you know, that was kind of almost like out of an option set. Yeah. Really nicely done. Uh, I don't think they had done – I don't think they quite – yeah. yeah. He just ran over the defenders. <laughs> Beck was also helping there. Oof. The PAT coming with 48 seconds to go in the half. The kick is up by Parker Wallace and good this time. The Zebras take the lead up. 41 to nothing as we get ready to head to halftime in just 48 seconds. Plays, 83 yards, took 223 off the clock. Colton Fervita with a two-yard touchdown run and Parker Wallace with the PAT in Rochester leads. Northfield 41 to nothing with 48 seconds to go in the half. The Odell Lumber kickoff by Parker Wallace getting ready to go. Again, C.J. Long, the deep man for Northfield. Here's Parker as he comes to the ball. End over end kick. Going to be taken by Daniels. Daniels at the 20. Tries to cut it back. Crosses the 25. Going to be pushed out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. And that's where Northfield will take over first and 10 with just 43 seconds to go here before halftime. 
We'll bring you up to date on some area scores coming up at halftime, and we'll also talk about the first half. We'll talk about Zebra Athletics as well. It's all coming your way at halftime. The Winning Edge Halftime Show coming up here in 43 seconds on the Insulation Guys scoreboard. Randy, Greg, and Val, glad you could join us. Beautiful night for high school football. We've been pretty fortunate most of the week so far. Oh, yeah. A couple weeks ago here at home was a little drizzly, but was it about, was about like seven or eight years ago we had like a thunderstorm every Friday night. We yeah. had like a delay. And Norris have to call a timeout as they had too many f men on the field and the play clock was about to run out. So the Norris take a timeout at Barnhart Field as the Norris come out of the timeout. The clock was running down and they had too many men on the field. So call a quick timeout. They have it now first and 10. Tippecanoe Valley, 21-6 over West Lafayette at halftime. Ball's loose and it comes away and I think the Zebras might have recovered it. Peyton Young got Peyton him. Peyton Young, and he does. Peyton Young with a recovery at the 25-yard line. As Perney was trying to roll out, kind of slipped, and then he lost the football. Well, it was on that exchange, you know, in the midline play, and uh, Brady Beck just broke it, broke it up, and then. So the Zebras will have it with 39.4 seconds to go here. We'll see what they opt to do, leading 41 to nothing. Up under center is Pollock from the near hash. Pollock looking to throw. He does to Dylan Hook, and it's batted down by the defender, number 23, Keaton Wallace. Not a bad, not a bad looking throw. No, it was a great throw. Set himself, was able to have some time. But again, if you're going to throw, that's his only option. Yeah. Be interesting to see if the Zebras maybe could uh, pick up a few yards here and, and bring Wallace in for a field goal attempt. That you know, you never know down the road when you're going to need it. Here's Parker or uh, Pollock. Pollock to Furvita. Furvita will come up short at about the three-yard line as that went to Beck, then to Furvita. The Zebras have run wild on misdirection plays in this game, and that was another example. And the Zebras call a timeout to stop the clock with 29.4 seconds to go here before halftime on RTC TV4 and Giant FM. We'll keep it here. Val, uh, what, what are you thinking here if you're Coach Schaefer? You call the timeout, you stop the clock. Do you, do you, are you thinking field goal, or are you thinking about punching it in? Um... I'm thinking about punching it. I mean, he's tried. He's tried the field goal. I mean, they, they've had they've had practice kicking field goals. I, I think they want to see but, if they can. But you remember, was it two weeks ago, three weeks ago? We were here. They missed the field goal down here at this one end, and Coach Schaefer, you know, kind of You're right. You want to see what? I wanted you to finish your comment. <laughs> I want to see what play Coach Schaefer has in yeah. mind. I think he wants to get maybe. And who does he? It's not who does he want. I think he wants to throw. Who does he want to catch the ball? And I think it might be Brent Beck. I think he wants to get Brandon catch out of the oh, backfield. You think Coach Schaefer wants to throw down here? <laughs> like a screen pass or a flat pass or something like that. Or maybe I'm not even saying a, you're wrong. Or maybe even a shovel pass. We're going to find out. I think it would be a great. I, I, right. I like the pass. Right. We're going to find out as the Zebras come up to the line now. Throw a pass to a wing back. Pollock up under center. Pollock. And the handoff goes to Fervida, and he walks into the end zone. Touchdown. We'll do that. Another four-yard <laughs> touchdown run. Looked like about the same play. Now, just if we were, if we were going to bet, I would have took the under bout. <laughs> <laughs> so with 25.5 seconds to go, another four-yard run by Colton Fervida, yeah. his second running touchdown of the night. And Brady Beck just pancakes somebody. And coming on for the PAT will be Parker Wallace. Pollock the holder. And yeah, we I saw some jumping there. I think that's gonna be on the zebras. And though. Caston leads 34 to six at halftime. Oh, it is against the Northfield, so they declined that. Parker Wallace will get ready to go. So Wallace comes set. There's the whistle. 
The snap is back. Pollock the holder. The kick by Wallace is good. And the Zebras now lead 48 to nothing here at 25.5 seconds. I almost said 2.5. It's 25.5 seconds to go. So Wallace will get ready to kick off that scoring drive by Rochester Ford. It was three plays, 25 yards. Colton Fervida with a four-yard touchdown run. Parker Wallace with the PAT and Rochester leads Northfield 48 to nothing with 25.5 seconds to go in the half. That was all set up by the Peyton Young. 25 on that last one. Peyton Young recovery of the fumble at the 25 yard line. So Wallace, a deep kick wow. this time, and it's going to go to uh, uh, CJ Long. CJ will bring it back, it comes up to the near side, and he will meet a host of zebras at the 24 yard line. And that's where they'll have it for the final 18.1 seconds to go. So 18.1 to go for Northfield. I think almost every single kickoff return Northfield's ran has been to the left. It has been. They have not ran it to the right, obviously. Left must be their strong side. So Perney will come back in, and he's been the passing quarterback. So I'm going to guess that they'll look to throw it again here with just 18 seconds to go. They put Daniels in motion. Now he comes back, and he'll set up on the near side. Perney. We'll keep it himself around the right side. He'll lunge forward, and he'll get to the 29-yard line. And that will probably do it. Clock ticks away. Northfield will head to the locker room. Zebras will head to the locker room, leading on the insulation guy's scoreboard. 48 to nothing here at Barnhart Field. When we come back, the Winning Edge halftime show, we'll talk about stats. What's going on in Zebra Athletics this week? And then uh, who knows what else we'll talk about. You never know around here. It's all coming your way back after this. Giant FM and RTC TV4. Real Talk Tuesday was always a highlight of my day. Most memorable cross country moment. Getting last place individually at the semi-state meet his sophomore year. Plans for after graduation to attend college to obtain a degree in music education so I can share it in music with others. Lynn Shea. <laughs> Wesley Steininger and parents Matt and Jenny Steininger. Favorite teacher, Mr. Lowe, because he's taught me such valuable lessons about engineering and life. His class has also brought me many memories that last a lifetime. Most memorable cross country or high school moment. Dressing up as fruits my sophomore year for the state meet. We met so many people, took so many pictures, and really brought color to the gloomy gray day. After graduation, he plans to study civil engineering in college and going into the Army ROTC program and graduate as an Army officer. Currently, I am looking to study at Vanderbilt University, Purdue, or the University of Evansville. Wesley Steininger. Moving on to the cheerleaders, beginning with Chloe Nichols, Terrence, Kristen Nichols, and Kurt Nichols. Favorite teacher, Mrs. Hernandez, is Chloe's favorite teacher because she feels like her school family. They share laughs and hardships, and Chloe is grateful for her and her life. Most memorable cheerleading or high school moment it was all of the times when the cheerleaders get really excited during a football game. When they all get super invested and everyone is having fun, that is when she is the happiest. Plans for after graduation to learn languages and travel abroad to learn about the world. Chloe Nichols.
Moving on to the band, beginning with Haley Coleman, Curtis Connie, and Jim Coleman. They were teacher, Mr. McCass, because I enjoyed the way he taught and his humor. The most memorable high school moment was when Mrs. Durenlo convinced me to join Color Guard last year as well as start playing the flute. Plans for after graduation to attend college and study abroad at an international dance school. Haley Coleman. Dylan Fishback, Parents Stacy and Brian Lott. Favorite teacher is Mrs. Hernandez, as she was extremely considerable towards him and cared about him when it felt like no one else did. Most memorable high school moment, Dylan's favorite band moment, was when the band went to the BOA show at the Lucas Oil Stadium where the band got caught in the rain and had to run back to the bus, jumping over streams of water pouring out of drains. After graduation, Dylan plans to go to college and major in astronomy and astrophysics to eventually work with other astronomers in unraveling the secrets of the universe. Dylan Fishback. Emma Grace Jarrett, Paris Tom, and Ellen Fry. Favorite teacher, Mrs. Bendez. Music is a huge passion of mine and a big part of my life. Most memorable high school moment was when her saxophone completely fell apart after she picked it up. Plans for after graduation, sleepy, and applying for an online college to go to into forensic science. Innovation Jared. <laughs> Leah Ritzberger, Paris Sean and Jared Ritzberger. Favorite subject is art because it's fun to explore different mediums and express creativity through a piece of artwork. Most memorable high school moment was going on field trips like the Art Museum in Indianapolis and the John Williams concert. Plans after graduation are undecided as of now. Leah Ritzberger. Lane Sharp, Paris, Sam, and Jim Sharp. Favorite teachers are Mr. Atkinson and Mrs. Shallon because they're relatable and they never fail to make him laugh with their deep discussions. Real Talk Tuesday was always a highlight of his day. The most memorable band moment was the bus ride back from Grace College when the girls' basketball team played there. After graduation, Lane plans to attend college to obtain a degree in music education. Lane Shea. Moving on to the Manitas, beginning with Raylan Gibbs, Harris, Amy, and Jay, excuse me, <coughs> Jay Mann. Again, Amy and Jay Mass, parents of Raylan Gibbs. Favorite teacher is Mrs. McMillan before she retired. They've had her since fourth grade for music specials, and she has always been a teacher I looked up to. My fa favorite subjects are art and choir. Being an art, I always had a chance to express myself or be creative. I love choir because from a little kid, I always liked to sing. And from the start of choir in middle school, I was able to be taught to sing properly. Most memorable choir or high school moment was when I was part of Shrek the Musical my freshman year. My most memorable choir moment was when Mrs. McMillan had the girls' choir harmonia 
dance for our concert with candy canes at the front of the stage for the song Sparkle, Jolly, Twinkle, Jingling. Plans for after graduation, I would like to become a tattoo artist or a cosmetologist or maybe even both. We lend gifts. Peggy Johnson, parents Jeff Jackson, but lives with Amy and Glenn Bodie. Favorite teacher are Mr. Nye and Mrs. Kirkwood. And favorite subject is culinary. Most memorable choir high school moment was working on the Frozen Junior musical. Plans for after graduation are to get a job working with animals and to save up for college. Peggy Johnson. Grace May Kidder, parents Robin Kidder and Jason Kidder. Favorite teacher, Miss Allen, choir. I've always loved music and I am grateful for the opportunity this class has given us. Most memorable choir high school moment, Raylan Miller and I changing our schedules every year to match each other's. Plans after graduation, I plan to attend IUK majoring in social work. Grace May Kidder, Caleb Lutt, parents Sean Remy, favorite teacher Mrs. Friend because she's always willing to help with any problems and makes English fun. Most memorable choir or high school moment, winning baseball sectionals my freshman year. Plans for after graduation are still undecided. Caleb Lutz. Shaylee McLeod Garrett, parents, Susan McLeod Garrett and Clarence Garrett. Favorite teacher is Miss Allen. Favorite subjects are art and choir. Most memorable choir of high school moment was my solo during my freshman year in concert choir. After graduation, I plan to stay in the workforce and hopefully become a tattoo artist in the future. Shaylee McLeod Garrett. Raylan Miller, parents Stephanie Miller. Favorite class is choir because there's always something new going on during that class. Most memorable choir or high school moment, there are too many to decide. After graduation, school is undecided, but we'll be studying psychology. Raylan Miller. Jackie Anna Swope, parents Abigail Minnies. Favorite teacher is Mr. McCants because he is cool and lets me watch Netflix. Most memorable choir or high school moment, going to beef and boards with the choir. Plans for after graduation, going to Messenger College in Texas for counseling. Emma Renee Wicker, parents, Dina Wicker and Devin Wicker. Favorite teacher is Miss Allen. Favorite memory from high school was being involved in the plays and musicals. I started out being part of the crew for Radium Girls and then became a cast member for future shows. These experiences helped boost my confidence and shaped me as a person. After graduation, I plan to continue working to pursue a theater, arts career, and attend Grace Trade School. Emma Renee Wicker. That concludes our senior introductions. Thank you. The, the atmosphere on senior night down there as well. Here's Pollock, hand it off to Beck. Beck runs it up the middle, now kicks it back outside. Beck through the tackles. Beck going all the way, the 10, 5, touchdown. Pass by Pollock. He's got a man wide open, and it's complete to Meadows. Meadows inside the 10, 5, oh. touchdown. Val oh. that loves the belly. <laughs> There's Deming up the middle. Deming breaks through. Deming on the nice right trap. side. That's Deming trap. is going to go. 
10-5, touchdown, Alex Deming. Pollock up under center. Pollock fakes it again. Fervita gets it around the right side this time. fervita has got the first down and more still down the sideline and finally going to be Dylan Hook in a wide receiver. Ferv goes in motion. The double handoff goes back to Beck. Beck around the left side. Beck cuts it back up the middle. Beck, 20, and finally going to be again. Hook Are to they the loading top. the left? Going they did the load left. left as Beck comes around that left side. Beck cuts it back down the sideline. Got another first down and a touchdown from the 19-yard line. Yeah, or, uh, or what you're thinking. Four I mean, that's one of those things we talked about you, you, you don't get to do. Four wide receivers in there. Did we Pollock just go shotgun? Over the top, and it's caught by Fervin a touchdown. Or, uh, or what you're thinking. Four I mean, that's one of those things we talked about you, you, you four don't get to do. Four wide receivers in there. Did we Pollock just go shotgun? Over the top, and it's caught by Fervin a touchdown. Goes to Fervita, back to Beck. Beck up the middle. He's wide open. Beck at the 50. Beck, 40, 30, 20, oh, wow. 10. And he's going to be caught from behind. Mm -hmm. so they need it, but they're <laughs> trying to get it in. Hook to the far side. They pitch it to Fervita again. Fervita just rolls over the defender and in for a touch. Call a quick timeout. They have it now first and 10. Tippecanoe Valley, 21-6 over West Lafayette at halftime. Ball's loose, and it comes away, and I think the Zebras might have recovered it. Never know down the road when you're going to need it. Here's Parker. Or, uh, Pollock, Pollock to Fervita. Fervita will come up short. Pass to a wing back. Pollock up under center. Pollock. And the handoff goes to Fervita, and he walks into the end zone. Touchdown. <laughs> Clock here to start the second half. Zebras will get the football to start as the Odell Lumber kickoff is going to be taken in the backfield by like, like Hook. Hook will bring it right up the middle. Hook comes to the near side. He's going to be stood up at about the 40-yard line, and that's where the Zebras will take over first and 10 here to get going here in the second half. That was Parks. I think that's the yeah, first time Parks has touched a kickoff since the each return one for a TD at Whitco. Olivia Bailey. Here I finally found it. Olivia Bailey will tee off tomorrow morning at 9-50 on hole number one. Uh, that was her good, good hole to get her started on today. She sunk that 15-foot putt, so we'll, we'll see if she can uh, continue on. And we'll get Ava Thomas is here for in, in a minute. Here's the handoff right up the front. It's Alex Deming. Deming across the midfield. Deming down the sideline. Deming at the 30, 20, 10, 5, and he's going to be knocked out of bounds at a, right at the five-yard line. A huge run for Alex Deming, and the Zebras will have it first and goal on their second possession of the half. Nice block by Dylan Hook. He was able to sustain the block and allow Alex to turn on the Jets. Ava Thomas will... Uh, tee off tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m., and she'll be on number 10 again. So that's where she started today. So so best of luck to, again, again Thomas and Bailey as they head to day number two. So first and goal for the Zebras inside the Farm Credit Mid-America red zone. Fumble balls on the ground, and quickly Carson Pollock picks it up and just rolls it around on it. And it'll be second and goal now, this time from the seven-yard line. Again, those are the things you want to clean up as you're the Zebras here on that exchange. So first and goal, clock continues to roll. Yeah, Aiden, and, of course, this is Aiden Harrington's third game at center. Right. He so start against Lewis Cass, then played against Peru last week. Pollock will come up under center. Nine on the play clock. Pollock. The handoff to Deming. Deming cuts it back up the middle. Deming is into the end zone. Touchdown. touchdown Seven-yard touchdown run for Alex Deming to start the third quarter. Need to put a Fitbit on Carson, how many times he runs back and forth <laughs> to Coach Schaefer. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely gets these steps in. The PAT by Parker Wallace. Yeah, for a long time, Rochester had kind of like a messenger system where they'd bring in a sub every play and right. bring in the play. Now they just, now the quarterback runs back and forth. Aaron Swango did that. Prue did all hand signals, didn't they, Val? Uh, uh, yeah. PAT is good. PAT and is the Zebras good. now lead 55 to nothing. 
as we head here into the first possession for Northfield in the third quarter. You're listening to Zebra Football, Giant FM, and RTC TV4. For a score on their opening drive of the third quarter, Val, you've got the scoring drive. Three plays, 60 yards. It took, well, technically two minutes and 50 seconds because the clock doesn't stop until after the PAT, but Alex Deming with a seven-yard touchdown run. Parker Wallace with the PAT, and Rochester leads 55 to nothing with 9-10 to go in the third quarter. Here's Wallace with the kickoff. It goes at the 10-yard line to C.J. C.J. Strong, or Long has it. He's uh, dancing around in the backfield. Finally going to be brought down by a host of Zebras at about the 22-yard line. That was Brent Beck. Who, Brent Beck is strong. <laughs> I mean, he, he just kind of did the do do and just kind of tossed him down. That was him. That was like out of the. If you didn't know he was a wrestler before, you know now. Is Wallace going anywhere to kick? I, I don't think so. I think he. I think he could have a chance. I think he has the the opportunity. So the Norris will come for their first time in the third quarter. First and ten from their own 22-yard line. Clock continues to roll. We're down to 8:25. Here in the third, Let's go around the right side. Quarterback. Uh, keeper and Perny meets uh, the Zebra secondary. That's been their best play the whole night. Yeah. They ran that probably six or seven times at least. Perny picked up five on that one. It's going to be second down and five. He got a chance to uh, meet Mr. Wesley Meadows and Alex Deming in on that one. Young, host of the uh, middle backs there. Second and five. Perny up under center. Perny is going to be sacked in the backfield and loses it. He goes down, and there is a fumble recovery for uh, the senior, Gavin Young. Perny did not tuck that one as he was being brought down. It came loose, and Gavin Young was right there, and he picked up on it. And the Zebras have it now inside the red zone at the 19-yard line. Farm Credit Mid America Red Zone, securing the future of rural communities and agriculture. Carson Pollock still in. Coach Schaefer must have heard you in the locker room. Pollock up under center. Hands it off to Deming. Deming around the left side. Deming still on his feet. Deming going to be brought down near the 10 yard line, and it should be enough for a Steve Moore insurance first down. We'll wait and see. Yep, it is. Another Steve Moore insurance first down for the Zebras. Pollock will bring the play in. Here comes the Zebras to the line with 20 seconds on the play clock. Clock continues to roll six and a half. And that one goes back to Parks, and Parks is going to go nowhere. He'll give back actually a lose a yard. That was Corbin Hopper with a really nice tackle. First time we've seen Parks tonight. Jackson Norton on the tackle. Brant Beck here on the sideline, and so Parks is in for him. That was the play they call. They often call for Fervita, but in the opposite yeah. direction. So they'll run the play Sweet in. Sweet play. Second and goal now for the Zebras. Here's it up the middle, and they're going to be touchdown zebras, and that was that Alex Deming. Deming. Belly, it looked like. Alex Deming again, and on the end zone. Yeah, nice kick out block by Brady Beck. So coming in for the PAT again is Parker Wallace. Wallace comes set. Here's the snap. Kick is up, and it is good. So the clock stops at the 5.08 mark as the Zebras take a 62 to nothing lead here at Barnhart Field. Alex with an 11-yard touchdown run. Parker Wallace with the PAT. And Rochester leaves Northfield 62 to nothing with 5.08 to go in the third quarter. So we'll get ready to kick off again. Parker Wallace will do that. And brought to you by Odell Lumber and Supply, your only locally owned building supplier. 
Peru leads Southwood 53 to seven in the third quarter with a running clock down there as well. And a halftime score, it is McConaughey 16, Lewis Cass 12. Whitco and Manchester 0-0 at halftime. Kickoff gonna be taken by Daniels and he takes it at the 20 and he's gonna be brought down at the 24 yard line, so just a four yard return. That was Wally and Fervida combining on the tackle there, I think. So it'll be first and 10 now for the uh, Norris. 440 to go here in the third quarter, running clock. Zebra's up on the insulation guy scoreboard, 62 to nothing. Winnemac leads West Central 22 to 14, end of the third quarter. So here is Perny up under center. Puts Daniels in motion, Perny back to throw. He unleashes one deep down the middle and it's gonna be caught. And in the deep into the Zebra territory, see the fumbles the ball oh, and it will be covered by Rochester, I believe. Nope, still loose and what goes out of bounds. Fumbaraya! Wow. C.J. Long with a great catch, but fumbles it as he gets down near the five yard line. If you're an RTC, here's the replay. Great job by Dylan Hook to get in there, but just couldn't quite get it as oh, it goes out of, out, of out of bounds. Out of yeah. yeah, Hook, Parks, and Long all dove on the board yeah. at the same time and knocked it out of bounds. So now it's first and goal for the Norris as Purdy put that one right on the numbers for C.J. Long and a great catch. A gain of 71 yards on that play. Perny up under center. Perny steps back, keeps it himself. Kind of go back up the middle. Perny fighting for more yardage, and he's going to be brought down. They're going to give him forward progress to. Oh, right there, no gain. It's one of the first times they've ran left in a long time. Yeah. And that was Northfield's first first down of the game on that last play. So they're going to be right at the five-yard line. That's where they mark him, second and goal. So Bernie will get the play from the sideline. Zebra defense still looking to uh, hold the shutout here. But they got the work cut, cut out for him is second and goal from the five for the Norris. Bernie up under center. Bernie. Keeps it. He's going to be hit in the backfield by none other than uh, Mr. Beck. Brady Beck bringing him down for a yard loss. So it'll be third and goal now from the six. Great penetration by Brady. I think Brady just gave a perny for his thoughts. <laughs> like he's been having a great game on the defensive side. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Steve. So third and goal now. From the six for the Northfield Norris. See a, see a Perny pick it up. <laughs> Perny up under center. He tosses it back to uh, C.J. Long, and he's not going to get anywhere. That's going to be a loss of a couple more yards. Unfortunately, the Norris get down deep, and they end up going backwards. Now, will they kick a field goal, or will they go for it? Couple substitutions coming in, and Perny will come in as well. So it looks I like throw it on this down. Tippecanoe Valley 28-6 now over West Lafayette. Wow, that's, wow. At, that's at West Lafayette, yes, by the way. That is wow. at West Lafayette. So they're going to go for it on the fourth and goal. The ball back to the eight-yard line. Perny's got twins to the far side. Perny looking to throw. It's in the air, and it's good. Going to be intercepted. Maddox Jewell uh -oh. with the interception. And he's got a lot of green grass in front of him. And there's a great block back at the 35. And here comes another block and a flag. And Jewell is going to go into the end zone. No, but we've got to wait. it off to Brady Beck. Brady Beck scored the touchdown. But now there's the flag. The flag was thrown at about the 40. And we've also got one back at the 35. It was a great block thrown back here at the 35. I'm not sure if they're going to call it a blindside block. I'm going to guess because they're bringing it back. See if we can get a look at it here from RTC. Yep, they're going to call a personal foul against the Zebras. 
Not sure if you look here, you see Alex Deming, I think. Yeah, that gave is a, not no. a blindside block. No, they, and they do call the. When you decleat somebody, <laughs> there's nothing that upsets me more than anything. When you decleat somebody when they're looking at you, or I felt even last week the block in the back against Prue, that Prue defender yeah. down on the five-yard line turned his shoulders back in, and we hit him square, and they called it. They called a block there as well. And that's going to end the third quarter. We end at 62 to nothing as the Zebras will have the ball deep in Northfield territory. You're listening to Zebra Football, Giant FM, and RTC TV4. Olivia, ba Olivia Bailey is two over and tight for six. She tees off in the morning at 9.50. Ava Thomas tees off at, on number 10 at Prairie View, and her tee time is 10.30. We wish them the best. Football back at the 21-yard uh, line, and unfortunately the Zebras Go backwards on that play as uh, some substitutions in now to start the fourth quarter for the Zebras. That was uh, 34, Kai Murphy with the carry. Also in will be the quarterback will be Clarence Garrett for the Zebras. Garrett will bring the play in from the sideline. Winnemac leads West Central 22-14 to 14 with wow. two minutes to go in the game. Winnemac wow. trying to hand West Central their first loss. That would be two in a row for the Warriors. Yeah. What Coach Burgess and his squad have really picked it up these last couple weeks. Garrett, the handoff, comes to the near side, and again, that one goes to 24. Trenton Meadows, a freshman. Caston now leads 49 to 6. You might see a parade in Fulton tonight. <laughs> yeah. I've I know what one looks like. It's going to last a long time. It'll last past midnight. <laughs> I can tell you that much. And Manchester leads Whitco 14 to nothing at the end of three quarters. Garrett up under center for the Zebras. Garrett finally gets the handoff. A little confusion there, I think, for the Zebras. But they do get it up marching forward. And Kale shots with the carry that time for the Zebras. And it's going to be fourth down and about five now for Rochester. Clock continues to roll. We're under uh, ten and a half. And Carson Pollock will come back in and punt it away. Again, that's fine. That's okay. I'm all right with Absolutely. this. I haven't, don't remember, recall, Val, do you recall the last time I seen the Zebras punt? It's been a few weeks. At the, at Valley, least. the Valley game? Carson with a nice Spiral kick. It takes a zebra bounce. It'll go inside the 30. Going to be down around the 20, and it does roll inside the 20. And that's where Northfield will uh, take over. First and 10, so a great punt by Carson Pollock. Was it the quarterback last week from Peru that took off on the fake punt? Yes. Yeah. Oh, he that was – he's thought about it for about a second or two, right. and I saw him take off. And I'm guessing he, he, the coach gives him the option. Yes. Yeah. He did have I and talked to him afterwards. You, if he would have just went straight to the edge yeah. and not cut back, he probably would have had the first down. What a punt by Carson Pollock, 57 yards. Oh, beautiful uh, spiral punt. No return. So it's at the 18-yard line. First and 10 now for the Norris. Clock continues to roll to 9.15 here in the contest. Perny up under center. Perny with the handoff. It comes to the near side. Oh, and wow. Fervita in there on the defensive stop. What a hit. Was that CJ? I think it was CJ, wasn't it, Long? It was I thought that was Denton. Was it, it Denton? Yeah. Okay. I know CJ was in the area. We're at Barnhart Field. Clock will continue to roll. 8.42 on the insulation guy. Scoreboard zero is up 62 to nothing. It's burning out. Up under center. A handoff comes to the near side. And... Couple yard pickup, and it's going to be fourth down now for the Norris. And again, Warriors do defeat uh, West Central 22 to 14. And Caston also getting their first win of the season. It's Winamac's second win. And 
and you can just tell you can just kind of feel it in the air now after that injury on the sideline whatever it is is just kind of taking the mojo out of this game yeah, and that's what's it was so scary is that Northfield had yeah. a big, terrible injury in last year's game at yes, home against did. Rochester. They did. And that was like in the first play of the game or in the first like minute of the game. C.J. Long has it on the carry to the left side. Was that with their offensive tackle last year, Val? Yeah. If I, think I remember was, right, yeah. he was one of their best players. Yeah, it was, it was a senior, and it was on their senior oh, night on top yeah. of that. It was just really scary. So it's going to bring up a fourth down. Man. Again, I didn't see anything – play related to anybody limped off or anything so I'm unfortunately not uh, we can't tell you exactly what happened as it was no just mysterious mysterious on the sideline yeah bringing a second ambulance crew in to I believe to help deal typical new valley now up 35 to 13 over that's, West Lafayette that's impressive I'm here to tell you fourth down they go to the air and it's going to be caught. Oh, what a catch by number 23. That's Keaton Wallace. Wallace with a kind of looked like a one-hand catch as it didn't look like he was even going to be in the area to get it. But somehow, Might RTC have got away fans, you get to look. Off. Yeah, <laughs> late in the game, why not? Not going to get called. What a great catch that time by. Yeah, it looked like Zach Parks was in position. Yeah, but he was right there. Wallace with a great catch. Second first down of the game for Northfield. So first and ten now for the Norris. Ball's at the 46-yard line. Start. The handoff. Nope, going to be kept, I think, by Perney. Perney keeps it. He'll gain a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Clock continues to roll. We're down to 6-10. Callan Furvita in on defense. Uh, Mr. Gardner is in on defense. See, we're getting some uh, guys in. James Gardner is number 79. Colin Wien is in a defensive end. So this zebra defense getting some younger kids in. Some experience here at second to nine now for Northfield. Up under center, Perney. Again, out of the wing T look. They hand it off right up the middle. And fumble, Zebras are saying. Uh, most of the starting secondary is still in. Is that yeah. correct, Randy? They're mixing. Got a good mix in right now. And they're going to say re fumble was recovered by Northfield. And coming up with it was 35. That was Turner Stevens. He recovered the own, his own fumble. Ball sitting just shy of midfield. Third down and about seven now for Northfield. Clock is right at five minutes and rolling here in the contest. Again, Zebras lead on the insulation guys. Scoreboard 62 to nothing. <laughs> Northfield comes out of the huddle. Ten on the play clock. They send the man to the near side. Or excuse me, the far side. They hand it off. Goes right back up the middle and they might get a yard on forward progress but that's going to be about it. It's going to be fourth and five now for the Norse. Stay with us for our post-game show being brought to you by the Tire Store and also our choosing of the Edith Rose Company hey, Player you know, of the man. Game. Val, well, you got a couple minutes yet to be thinking about that. These guys are putting us to work trying to decide that one tonight. Fourth and five. Northfield comes to the line. Perney up under center. Sins, yeah, there's everybody moving. She's Jay Long went in motion and a couple others went with him. So it'll back it up and we'll repeat fourth down. Now we'll see. I'm guessing they're still gonna go for it on fourth down here at midfield. Ball gets back to the 47 yard line. Lewis Cass leads McConaughey 18 to 16 end of the third quarter. Fourth and nine now for the Norris. It's over in West Lafayette. Valley beats the Red Devils 35 to 13. Wow. Valley now 7 and 0. Oh. That's a huge win for the Tippecanoe uh, Valley. I, I think the biggest non Bell regular yeah. season win that Valley's maybe has ever had. Goes to the air to Perney, and it's incomplete. It'll be a turnover on Downs, and Rochester will take over in Northfield territory at the 47 yard line. 
with three minutes and counting to go here in this contest. Remember, Northfield made it to semi, or West Lafayette made it to semi state yeah. last year. Right. They went 13 and 1 last year. Um, Got things rolling at Tippecanoe Valley. Yeah. Congratulations to them on a big win. Garrett up under center now for the Zebras. Garrett sends Murphy in motion. The handoff to Shots up the middle. Shots will fall across the 45 yard line. Going to be down near the 44. It's about a, five, about a four yard pickup, so that'll be second down and six now. Carter, Clarence Garrett will bring the call in. Down to 2.15 to go in the contest. Garrett up under center, sends Murphy in motion. Shots gets it, nope, Garrett keeps it. Garrett goes around the right side. He's got first down and more. Great run by Clarence Garrett, the sophomore quarterback. Trevor Wally will come in. Val going to put you on the spot. Your Edith Rose player of the game. I'm letting you choose it tonight. <laughs> I wrote mine down. I wanted to see if you and I agreed again. Uh, Clock rolls. It has to be a senior, right? I mean, it really uh, has to be. I would. The seniors played well tonight, yes. Have we given it to number 55 yet this year? No, we have not. And I think he deserves it because. And I think that's a great call. Yeah. Uh, Brady Beck uh, was everywhere tonight. Yes. And I, I have a feeling he had a big roll and practice this week. Yes, he did. Brady Beck, our player of the game, brought to you by Edith Rose Company. They craft products for your health and well-being in mind. Congratulations, Brady Beck. Was, was Val right? Did you, Val, agree? No, I didn't pick a senior. I forgot it was senior <laughs> night. <laughs> well, there's no, no, we don't have to pick a senior, <laughs> but, you know, the seniors led this tonight. They, they wanted this win at senior night. I said he did control the line of scrimmage. They did. Here's the Zebras yeah, running to the left yeah. side. This is the first time Val and I have ever disagreed. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's Congratulations again, Brady Beck, yeah, our player. I'll tell you, Shots does a very, very good job. He does. Back with the play fakes. And uh, the clock is at 32. The Zebras don't have to take a snap, and they're going to call the team over to the sideline, and that's going to do it. Your final here tonight on the Insulation Guys scoreboard, 62 to nothing. The Zebras win it. We'll be back for the tire store pre -game, or post game show after this. Giant FM and RTC TV4. Be sure to travel with the Zebras next Friday night as we head to Southwood. Kickoff scheduled for 7 o'clock. Rochester High School. Thank you for your attendance and support of Zebra Athletics. Have a wonderful weekend.